Mark More Than a Mother moves from Africa to Asia for the first time at Asia Pacific Initiative on Reproduction, Aspire, 7th Annual Congress with Her Royal Highness the Crown Princess Aziza of Pahang, Malaysia, the ambassador of Merck More Than a Mother campaign to inspire and empower infertile women across the globe through access to information, health and change of mindset. I, I, I'm looking at the African problem. Well, you have more problem than Malaysia or in India as well. We are lucky in this country in a way that um, when I first started to have my fertility uh, treatment, we, I had to go to Singapore because Malaysia only had GIF and they were doing IUI. So I went down to Singapore. But now Malaysia has from Penang, from you know everywhere, and also I believe the government hospitals have also started um, offering a fertility treatment apart from the women ministry that we have. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how it is in Africa. Most of the women are discriminated and mistreated because they are infertile. They are the only one to be blamed for infertility. Also, as we all know, 50% of infertility cases are due to male factor, but it is not being admitted or uh, it's always denied to uh, have this uh, you know, responsibility of going to uh, sh support your wife, share responsibility to go test it and get treated. As you know, not only that, I mean, women like Grace, they didn't know what is happening to them and they don't know what's happening to them until it is too late. All this, why Merck More Than a Mother is very, very critical for Africa. Why it's very critical for us to come here to aspire, to discover and explore opportunities of collaboration and uh, partnerships, to be able to build capacities in uh, fertility care capacity in Africa, because who else will help in this? except you, because you already been through this long time ago. And uh, of course, also define interventions to how to improve uh, ways of raising awareness, define intervention to break the stigma around infertile women uh, and infertile couples in general. In my country, infertility care or fertility care services are actually private and the clinics are all within the capital city. There are five but all within the capital city and quite expensive for the ordinary person to actually even afford. So it costs about $5,000 for one to access, have these services, which the ordinary person, as I said before, in the rural area cannot afford. And worst of all, people in the rural area, because this subject is a subject that has not been discussed before. So most of the people do not even know that they can actually be assisted to actually become mothers or fathers. So they live with the challenge. And we are happy that Mark approached me and I had to take up this mantle. And we did launch this awareness campaign in 2016 February. And from that time on, we are not turning back. We have now been speaking publicly about infertility, its prevention, and of course, aware that close to 80% of these cases can actually be prevented. When you get married, your inheritance, which in most cases is land where you will build your house, is where you're married. And you are buried where you're married. And so for most cases, even when you are infertile, it is very difficult for your parents to get you back home because the land at home has already been distributed among the boys and therefore they want you to persevere in that marriage. That's why you are seeing majority of the women continue to suffer, even some of them telling you that uh, their backs are burned and, and they are still supposed to persevere where they are married. In this circumstance, mobilizing them sensitizing them, but also changing the cultural shift to tell the people of the continent, and in my case in Uganda, that when a woman is married and the, the, the husband's side 
doesn't welcome her anymore because she's infertile, please let's put a law that will facilitate the, 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 the woman to go back to the, where she's born and get her inheritance and her support and her land and her house where she's born. Sierra Leone, we do not have the capacity, we do not have an IVF clinic. We were never able to um, treat, to even diagnose um, infertility. Dr. Sarah from Ken um, Uganda, sorry, was talking about about $5,000. In Sierra Leone, it's completely different. You have to think about buying a ticket. You have to think about paying for accommodation wherever you decide to go to be treated for um, infertility. Sierra Leoneans up to today do not have that option. But thanks to Mark, more than a mother, we've already identified um, some doctors to be trained. And um, it's amazing coming from having not having enough specialists, we are going to have the first um, set trained by Mac. So thank you very much. I'm happy I was able to meet with most of you because it would not have been possible if I did not meet dynamic women. Uh, when my child was born through a surrogate mother, I had to go through adoption because we didn't have a law that governs surrogacy in our country. So I had to go through a very long, longer process of adopting my own baby and it took almost four years for us to be allowed to, to have him as uh, legal parents. And so the law that we advocate for in, in Kenya also assures women who get children through surrogate uh, mothers that are also recognized by law as biological parents of, of that child. I have to thank Meg for coming to, to, to communicate with us uh, and it really have awakened a lot of discussions surrounding the issue of infertility because even now in, in, the, in the social media uh, when we went back to, to see a number of uh, discussion about infertility it has been so uh, very exciting to, to see how people have been talking about this issue all this year. Uh, there is a new concept that they actually put on the media, Namama Zero. I think it's something that to do with people who do not get children. But I, we have to come and educate also through the media because we actually said, how many of you can tell us about who aborted a baby, for instance, rather than talking about Mama Zero who never have been pregnant or something like that. So we are using a lot of channels in order to educate uh, the young people through the media and also the platform that the First Lady have created. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Julieta. And I have uh, the answer for the balancing between the family planning and the infertility. It's just a very simple uh, answer. Uh, the, the families who has more, they have less. We don't want nine and ten and Eight, yeah. So they can have less, and then and then who does not have at all? At least they have the right as a human right to have at least one. So it's a really balanced. So the fertility rate is high because of the families who has more than two or three, and uh, this is not even supporting the economy. After the success of the partnership model between Merck More Than a Mother and India and Indonesia more opportunities will be explored to build fertility care capacity and defining interventions to break the stigma around infertility in Africa and Asia. Uh, my question will go now to um, uh, Dr. Kamini Rao, uh, Ambassador of Merck More Than a Mother. And uh, the role you played with us is a great role to train uh, the first four candidates from Tanzania as uh, the first actually are going to be the first IVF and embryology specialist in Tanzania and uh, embryologist from Ghana who also be the first embryologist in Ghana so uh, I would like to for, for you to share with us uh, this experience and how do you feel this will be sustainable for the rest of, because you are also going to train Sierra Leone and yeah it was a pleasure to see that when these four students came across I didn't find this as a challenge because we are doing it for a long time, in fact, over eight to nine years. And thanks to Merck's funding, we were able to set up this training center and it's doing very well. So having 
these four students coming across was just adding to the numbers. But as far as the students were concerned, the first thing they said is that we would like to learn everything. So the fire in the belly was there. The second thing was, where do we start? So right from the beginning, we took them through the theory part and the practical part. And we found that the interest level, the intelligence level was the same as anywhere else in the world. So it is not because they were not intelligent, there were no opportunities. So when they learned through, and in fact they've finished, I think uh, Rasha has had a video also of what they've said, but more importantly, it was a great learning experience for me that just because of lack of opportunity, many people suffer in countries because there's no facility available. I first like to let to convey the, uh, what has been said before about this training is an absolutely wonderful uh, partnership we have been creating, uh, particularly uh, when I first in, uh, approached by uh, Merck, uh, Russia in, in this case, uh, uh, introducing the concept how we can uh, share, uh, initiating a concept of uh, empowering uh, women in Africa. The first time that struck me to, to when I came back from Australia, um, the first thing I see about Indonesia, the same thing about Africa is happening at the moment. At the time, there was no training program, there was no clinicians, uh, uh, there was no embryologist uh, that was properly trained, and we had to do everything our own, which is something that we feel that this is uh, something that we need to share, we need to to, to, to be able to empower to uh, many other centers elsewhere, uh, particularly in Africa, there is a, a, a very uh, big need towards uh, infertility care. So when I was invited to Kenya, I was really quite um, uh, impressed to see that uh, the level of knowledge, the level of excitement of the uh, potential embryologists, uh, clinicians, uh, towards uh, going forward into uh, embarking on a proper ART uh, programs uh, to provide uh, good services in Africa. So the issue of capacity building, uh, this is a remarkable program. It's attracted the attention of not just the societies that you mentioned, but the American Society of Reproductive Medicine. Uh, so this has gone global. It should go global because what you've created is a paradigm for the way we should go about looking at this problem. So we thank you very much for what you and Merck have done, and I have had the privilege of discussing this with the other leaders back in Frankfurt and Germany, and I know uh, that they are just as excited and just as passionate, maybe not just as passionate, but awfully passionate about this program. So we thank you, and we thank the Foundation for moving this forward. Thank you very much. I would really like to thank Merck first, because uh, when I was elected as a president-elect for Aspire, uh, somebody from Merck came up and said, what is your vision and, uh, for Aspire and as where you know Merck can help you? And I said, you know, uh, I am coming from the developing countries and I have a lot of developed countries in my region as Asia Pacific. So can't we really do something together and build up areas or centers of excellence where we would be helping in capacity building, training people from the developing countries so that what I'm really looking at is that a woman in some corner of Pakistan or Africa should have equal access to the treatment which a woman in America or Europe will have. And that cannot be done unless and until we have people who are trained equally well, who are provided the infrastructure where they can perform well. The issue of pioneering IVF as you are trying to set up, first, 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 is that once you do this, there will be a multiplier effect. From our pioneering effect in, La in Lagos, now today in Nigeria, there are 64 IVF clinics in Nigeria. So, we must thank Mark that what you are doing is sowing a seed. I would like to um, thank uh, Mark, thank you uh, for inviting me to sit on this high panel to discuss infertility problem, which is, as you say, it's not just within Africa, it is a global thing. Yes, and even in, the, in Asia, uh, we, have, we have the same problem, but it is like a taboo talk about it. So it is something that is not much discussed, it is quiet. And uh, with 
Merck than more than a mother coming in aid to help women with their fertility problems and to empower women to have a life even if they don't have children, if the husband um, abandon them or chase them out. On behalf of all these women in the world, I would like to thank Merck for the beautiful work you're doing to help women, to empower women abroad. But I also must warn you, when you empower women, they become overpowering. Thank you very much.